Uh, in terms of starting Verify Me, my co-founder actually, uh, Tunjo Luwale, um, started Verify Me or the first iteration of it, um, as we say, when he came from America with his family and was poisoned. Absolutely. We should turn it off so people can't jack by anymore. So why? <laughs> we need why? to stay here, fix but, our country. But you didn't start up like your journey. Most mm. of it happened abroad. So why mm. do you want to turn it off? It's a good question. So when young people tell me they're Japper and I just, I close my mouth because I'm like, I don't want to be called a hypocrite. One of the things that I learned um, in terms of your thought process when you're innovating is that you need to include your customers in the conversation. I realized that um, starting a business is very different from starting a business in America. In Nigeria, you have to fight for yourself. Where is it easier to be an activist? <sighs> it depends on whether, you know, DSS is looking for you or not. <laughs> um <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Back to Base, the founder podcast, where we discuss with tech founders, founders in every field, by the way. We want to pick their brains. We want to know how they think. You know, how did they form the idea of starting that company? So you can have an idea or two. Uh, you don't have to start yours. My name is Lillian, and this is Africa Tech Radio. Today, we are going to have a chat with the co-founder of um, Verify Me Nigeria, Sige Ag- <laughs> Aguile. <right>? Fantastic. <laughs> I have um, this feeling that I always pronounce people's names wrong. That's okay. But that's good. I've right? heard way oh. worse. I'm used to it. What's the worst you've heard about? For my first name? Mm-hmm. Um, a very long time ago, um, Jay-Z, you know, Jay-Z has a song called Getting Jiggy With It, na-na-na-na-na-na-na. And so when the song came out, I was somewhere in public, and they said my name is CJ. But instead of saying SCJ, the person was like, S Jiggy? S Jiggy? <laughs> and I had to walk through the whole hallway, right, with like hundreds of people staring at me as somebody is announcing on the mic, S Jiggy, S Jiggy. And then as I get to the front, some guys are like, na 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 <laughs> That would stick. <laughs> yeah. I laughed too, so it was funny. It I'm was, used to it. <laughs> so I, I, I heard you say CJ. We had a conversation mm-hmm. like is it a CJ, a CJ? So it's a CJ. It's a CJ from Ishan, yes. If you're in Benin you say SCG. Um and then in, in another country, you know, I've been called C, CJ, EJ, everything. I okay. pretty much answer. Even the alphabets, J, E. <laughs> <laughs> so it's CJ. Tony will say, I told you so. Exactly. But. All right. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's go back. Mm-hmm. You've talked about how you know, your, your name has been mispronounced. I know that even secondary school, if you go way back, you hear was or you remember was, but that's the earliest you can remember. But... Uh, you are an entrepreneur, right? You're also an activist. Hmm. Did anything you did back then in school form you know, the idea behind starting your company and your profession? Um, so I would say that a lot of what I did in school uh, prepared me a little bit for the kind of struggle you uh, are challenged with when you're running a business in Nigeria. Uh, in terms of starting Verify Me, my co-founder actually, uh, Tunjo Luwale, um, started Verify Me or the first iteration of it, um, as we say, when he came from America with his family and was poisoned. Um, they slept for 18 hours. And when they woke up, their house was completely robbed. And this is actually the story of Verify Me and how it started. Um, out of that um, terrible experience, um, we he was able to, um, because of what happened to his family, um, and out of love for the community, really say that um, I want to come up with a solution that is going to um, solve the problem of security in homes so that we can have proper ID verification. Um, and, uh, as I was even still living in the States at the time. Um, but I did come and serendipity had it that we met. Um, and my background as an engineer, solutions architect, and, uh, I did a lot of business transformation work. Uh, we had a conversation about 
what the massive potential is um, for the idea. Uh, and in about 2017, uh, we decided to uh, basically become an ID verification and KYC tech company. Um, and then we started rebuilding our solution together and built everything from scra- um, ground up. In 2019, we actually launched the first product. Um, and it's been um, a fantastic and challenging journey ever since. So what does Verify Me? I know you've given us the Mm -hmm. overview. Mm -hmm. So what exactly, Mm -hmm. how do you run Verify Me? Mm -hmm. Verify Me makes it easy for businesses to grow. Um, And that is businesses that need to access identities um, or KYC information for compliance um, or for more insight on their customers so that they can provide services. So what we do for businesses um, is that we provide um, secure and compliant and AML compliant identity and analytics information on people yeah. so that they can give those people services. On okay. the other end, and this is where we're even, I think, um, very inspired, is that we make it possible for every African or are making it possible for every African to have access to financial inclusion products. And for us, we see that as social empowerment because uh, back in the day, you know, once you have an identity, you don't need somebody to write your recommendation for you to get your electricity or your phone or get a 50,000 naira credit. Mm -hmm. Um, So we see it as the first spark of independence for the masses uh, in terms of access to financial inclusion products. And that's the other end for us. Okay, uh, somebody recently talked about how he was denied a U.S. visa. And based on what you just said, an idea popped into my head. What if U.S., you know, immigration use something like this? Right? They do. They do? Many use us, yes. Many, but um, it is not mm-hmm. all that yet. Yeah, no, I would say that uh, Verify Me is the infrastructure for a lot of um, embassies who do verification um, for um, people who are getting visas and all the visas that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when we can bring not just the identity, but, you know, criminal data, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, location information, uh, financial profile information together, depending on what visa has been applied for. Um, it also, it's a very powerful tool for um, consular offices that are looking to assess candidates. Uh, uh, that, that's not going to the, the U.S. and... <laughs> The embassy. Let's just stick with you because I have a lot to ask. We should turn it off so people can't jack by anymore. So why? (laughs) We need to stay here and fix our country. But you didn't start up like your journey. Most Mm. of it happened abroad. So why Mm. do you want to turn it off? It's a good question. So when young people tell me they're Japarian, I just, I close my mouth because I'm like, I don't want to be called a hypocrite. <laughs> Say, tell, tell me, why? But, but um, there is a science to it. The truth of the matter is a massive Japa is a national security problem. I know we don't look at it as that. It's a national security problem. Um, and it's, it's because what it really is when you look at it is IQ extraction. They're not taking the people with the lower IQs. They're taking the people with the highest IQs. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is going to be a problem in any societies so what do you want them to do well obviously you can't tell people not to look for a better life for themselves so really the only solution is for us to build a better country so people want to stay So when the country is better then we can start staying for sure until then we will disappear right? that's why we're pushing it'll get better okay i just wanted that to be <laughs> clear so can you share with me what your um process your thought process is like i'm talking about yes your co-founder started this but this is something you do together right so what is your thought process what was your thought process when you started this and how do you still think when you're innovating Mm -hmm. wow so you know i would say it's not the same as when we started i've learned a lot um one of the things that i learned um, in terms of your thought process when you're innovating is that you need to include your customers in the conversation. Um, and whatever product you build has to be a synthesis between your vision and what customers are willing to accept. Um, and we obviously, you know, uh, have had challenges with that in, so in the past. And so we learned the hard way. Mm-hmm. And so we've kind of were, I would say, very good at it now. Um Really, you know, when you start, you know, when you're building a business, I'll say in the beginning, um, obviously you have to be realistic about your vision. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, in terms of process, I see it as being able to add structure to a vision 
um, break it down so you can deliver it to yourself or to the public in uh, in in I would say iterations, um, and you know always have some kind of growth path and not try to build everything together at the same time. Um, and within that process, I think you have to have um, certain skills that are not tangible skills that people talk about. So I see things like consistency as a skill, for example. Um, courage is a skill. Um, integrity is a skill, for example. I know we always like to talk about maths, physics, analytics, this, this, this but there's really the driving skills that that bring all those things together. So you can really be good at, you know, uh, I would say traditional skills, you know, the way we define them. Mm -hmm. Uh, But without the courage, without the integrity, without the consistency, um, it will still be very difficult to build a company. What are your thoughts about character and talent? I had a conversation with someone who said that one doesn't have to have a good character. Talent covers it all. No, you do have to have a good character, particularly in leadership. Um, a lot of people are not going to follow someone with a bad character because, first of all, you have to be loyal to your people. Um, one of the things, for example, at Verify Me is we realize very early is that, and one day, you know, it's, we're not just building a company. We're building lives. So the people who are at the company, their lives are growing while they're at the company, right? So how are we also contributing to that, Right. Um, you need a character to be able to even have that perspective, I think. Um, so um, character is definitely important. Yeah, what, of, what of us as an employee? Of course. And, and that's where it, it comes professional integrity. Um, and I would say, you know, one of the areas that we can continue to improve in Nigeria, I know it's very difficult in a chaotic environment, is, you know, continue to improve our professional integrity. But yeah, it's a key ingredient for success for sure. All right. Uh, I read that you're an activist and I, you have confirmed that. But what exactly? <laughs> activist. <laughs> For people who do not know. What, Accidental activist. What, what is that all about? Mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, you know, activism is... Um, for me, I, I, I'm I Nigerian. I So I know that I have a stake in this country. Um, I know that I have a right to speak. Um, and I know that my ideas... Are okay to express. Mm-hmm. Um, so in, I just see activism for me as, you know, telling the truth, right? Um, even if people try to make it difficult for you um, and representing yourself. Um, of course, you know, I have a little bit of history of that. I was the long time ago president of the African Students Association at Howard University. Um, and we were very active. We protested military governments. You know, we were doing all that stuff in the streets. This is in the 90s. I'm much older than you guys. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and um, so that taught me a lot. Obviously, you know, I went and had a career in, in, in the corporate world. But coming back to Nigeria, I realized that um, starting a business is very different from starting a business in America. In Nigeria, you have to fight for yourself. Um, you, have to, you have to fight with regulators. Um, you have to fight with, um, you know, socializing your ideas uh, because things are just a little bit more difficult here. Mm-hmm. So um, that's how I see, you know, my kind of activism now. It's more like... A, I see business as a force for good, mm. right? Um, and when you have that, I think in our position, we're lucky enough to have a business that is also a force for good. It's very easy to be activist around. So let's compare activism mm-hmm. in the US mm-hmm. and activism in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. I was well, Nigeria is my country, so I would say that it's 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 more fulfilling in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that we have culturally, it's less accepted in Nigeria. We don't want to hear too much. You know, okay. um, especially coming from outside, it's like, are you the only one? You know, go back, Joe. You know, that kind of stuff. So, but that doesn't bother me. You know, I understand that as well. So. Where is it easier to be an activist? <sighs> it depends on whether, you know, DSS is looking for you or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is not easy. <laughs> but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was a joke, oh, please don't. <laughs> Keep going. But yeah, I, I would say it's, I would say it's easier here. It's mm. easier here. Okay, yeah. except for the fact that you know you might land. In, <laughs> yes. Okay, go away. No, no. At least after three days they'll release you. They're, they're forgiving you. Know, Nigeria, we don't lock anyone up for too long, no <laughs> matter what. After a while, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Mm, I mean, uh, then yes. you go back to the streets. Yes, it's enough for a while. <laughs> All right. So you studied at Howard University, yeah. HU. HU, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't study there, so. Yes.
Don't worry. It's never too late. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm curious how... You, you mentioned, right, that you were doing a lot of activism there, but how did your, your experience there shape your entrepreneurial journey mm-hmm. and your activism? Like, I want specific details. So I learned a lot. Um, and particularly, I learned a lot about Nigerian history um, that I ne- didn't necessarily... I wasn't necessarily taught here. And I think we kind of... Um, gloss over when we teach ourselves. And what I learned there in terms of my activism is that Nigeria needs a national security perspective, um, which for me translates into things like digital sovereignty. Um, Do you own your products? You know, when you're doing all these MOUs and, you know, getting all this, you know, are you really negotiating so that we have a stake, right, in in what we're building? Um, And I think that the activism over there, you know, kind of educated me to the fact that, you know, these are some of the things you need to look at when you're, you're talking about business. It's also about ownership. It's not just about, you know, having functional products in your countries. Do the people in the country own? You know, many entrepreneurs want to start something. Even if I'm not yet an entrepreneur, I have dreams. What advice do you have for people who you know, have the zeal? You mm-hmm. have like a picture painted, but the action is lacking. That's a very interesting one. Um, you know, and sometimes I think that happens, especially if the person has passion because they're trying to produce too much at the same time. Um, so the first thing I would say is, um, you know, they always say, half your problem is solved when you write your idea down, right? And what it is you want to do. So first of all, just write it down. Um, At least that's easy enough, even if you're writing it out daily in increments. Um, I think that you will get to a point where you will just open up um, and the steps you have to take, you know, will will begin to unfold as you you start to do that. So I would say that's a start. Mm -hmm. And then the second part is be okay with doing things in increments, right? And in iterations. So you don't have to... Um, do everything at the same time as well. Um, and then um, plan properly, right? Um, you know, and, and really, you know, try to stick to that plan. So I would say those are the things. And, you know, one day, you know, and we started there, you know, there was a time where we did, you know, one ID verification in a week. We'll be calling, she's like, somebody's using us. Somebody's Woo! using us. Somebody's <laughs> using us. Somebody did an ID. Oh, my God. And we're celebrating, you know, and, you know, uh, by the end of last year, we're doing, you know, 1.5 million verifications a month. Right. So it started from somewhere. It started from somewhere. But yeah. this day and age, we're all about the now, mm-hmm. the now, not tomorrow. Mm-hmm. One. I want to start now. If I've if I've started now, I have to I have to blow. That's what we use now. I will have to blow now. So you're saying be okay to start small. Yeah. Okay. So are you of the opinion that entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, have certain traits that make them successful? That okay, if you are not possessing these traits, there's no way you're going to be successful. Really? Yeah. What, what traits are those? If I was to name one, I would say grit. Mm. Grit. That's grit to push through, overcome challenges, uh, despite, you know, what's going on. I'll tell you a funny story about our first bank customer. Um, I was living in Abuja. Mm. I still am. And, um, you know, they call me and say, you have to be in our office in Lagos at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, I had dropped... My, my daughter smashed my, the face of my phone that day. So I had no time to go get a new phone. I dropped my wife at the airport, who happens to be traveling at the time, and it's night. 11 p.m., I'm coming back. I apparently bought bad petrol, so my car dies on the road, right? Um, so I'm alone. I basically, I, have, I can't call Uber because the face of my phone is smashed. So I hitchhike home. I get home about midnight or 1 a.m. or something. Um, I tell somebody in, in my compound, um, you know, I'm going to need a ride to the airport in the morning because my car died and I, I left it on the road. Um, the guy's like, okay, no problem. So we head out maybe somewhere around 5.30 in the morning. Um, on the way there, the guy misses his way, tries to reverse and reverses half of a bridge. Um, so I'm basically kind of dangling off the bridge. I give him some cash. I take my briefcase, take my uh, suitcase. I climb out of the car um, and I stop a kabu kabu basically. And I'm like, I need to get to the airport. My flight is at leave seven o'clock to land Lagos at eight o'clock. And I have one hour to get to Ireland. The kabu kabu stops, takes me. Um, over um, and his car is his tire is shaking and everything the tire explodes 
Um, and we ended up in a ditch, right? Um, I climbed out of the car. I got my suitcase, gave him some money, gave him my, I took my uh, briefcase as well, literally walked out of the bridge on the way to the airport in Abuja. Um, and I hitchhiked um, with three men, sat on somebody's lap, and there was a cow in the pickup truck at the back that ended up taking me to the airport. Um, I made my flight. Um, I made the um, presentation. And that was how we got our first bank customer. You are so calm about the story. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? You're way too calm. <laughs> you don't say Nigeria. You can't kill yourself. I'm, I'm literally losing it. From, like, if it was... Yeah, some people will tell you, oh, it's, it's a sign. It's God a, does not want me to go. And then just, yes. Whoa. Yes, the sign so, I have is success. God so, wants me to be successful. So I'm going to keep pushing. So great. Yes. What else? And so grit, I would say, is really um, encompassing, but also courage, integrity, sensitivity, all those other intangible things. Um, And entrepreneurship is being able to make the intangible tangible. So add structure to your vision and produce it. So let's go back to base. Right. I want to know about your background. Your primary, secondary education was it here in Nigeria? It was. I went to Corona, um, and I went to Corona Bagada. Well, I studied in Papua. I went to Corona Bagada. Okay. Um, I went to Federal Government College Lagos mm. here. Um, I did a stint in Unilag and then Japan. Stint it was a few months. It wasn't, few? it wasn't working. We're closed. Like, At that point, you know, Confra was everywhere. You know, my fam- my folks were just like, it's time to go. So, do you think that any trait your family, your father, your mom, mm-hmm. uh, has influenced you? Of course, I do. My, my my mom was an activist, so she used to protest for Nigerian independence. In fact, my mom was the first person to take me to a protest, um, oh, wow. which was protesting the military government in Nigeria, literally. And I was young, I was a teenager. So yes, my parents have always been in, in you know, kind of, uh, they have grit. Uh, my dad is a business owner. He mm-hmm. actually was the first Nigerian to own a gas company, Granny Gas. It was called Greater Nigeria Gas as well. So he was an entrepreneur, is an entrepreneur. So yeah, probably I I got that from them. So (laughs) this just solidifies my my whole ideology of you, if you want to be successful, you have successful parents or have parents who have the successful mindset. Do you agree with that? Yeah, it's called, um, you know, you pass the energy down generationally, I guess, yes. A Twitter user posted something he was upset about how um, founders, entrepreneurs sugarcoat the journey. Oh, it's just God's grace. They don't tell you about the dark side to whatever it is they are doing. Oh, I may call that, do you know that I, I earn $2 billion every week, but you don't tell us what you do to earn that money. So can you tell me about the less than glamorous side of being who you are in one sentence blood sweat and tears right in nigeria um you're going to do everything from carry a gen if you're a small business and <laughs> run with it to you know do that perfect presentation uh to shout to you know uh to threaten <laughs> to work two days in a row overnight um you know somebody asked me you know the difference between a business owner in America, for example, or one in Nigeria. I'm like, in Nigeria, you're a ninja, you know, um, because you have to do everything. And yes, it, there's nothing to sugarcoat. Because you're also even fighting a lot of times regulators and government who still have a lot of work to do to get it right on how they regulate or how they want to regulate businesses. Um, so it's an arduous, uneasy, challenging but rewarding journey for sure. All right. Thank you very much, thank CGA. You. Yes. I got it this time around uh, for joining us on Back to Base. Of course, you know that he is the co founder of Verify Me Nigeria. So when you add Nigeria there, is there for Verify Me UK, US, Ghana? <laughs> Fantastic. In fact, you know, it's actually, you know, we're verifying me in Nigeria, but our global brand is actually Core ID, which is now our B2B um, infrastructure. Um, so in Ghana um, and in Kenya and also actually out in Nigeria as well, um, we do have Core ID, um, which is really is the uh, infrastructure for all our B2B customers. Um, as Verify Me really is a household name um, and we're looking to do a lot still, you know, with that, but really 
core ideas is right. the global company. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, it is back to base. And thank you very much for listening. And do not forget to follow us on all our platforms on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere. Just search Africa Tech Radio. Have a great day. <laughs>